Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with Grant Hardy. My journey with gaming ultimately started when I was a kid. Uh, Hi, my name is Lucas Gates. I am 29 years old and I am the owner and founder of NeuroValiant. I myself am not a pro gamer by any stretch of the imagination, but I know how important it is uh, to have that community uh, aspect when it comes to gaming because a lot of people find it as a great escape. Through NeuroValiant, Lucas is hoping to make the gaming community more inclusive for people on the autism spectrum by supporting neurodiverse gamers and partnering with esports and gaming companies. What if they need like sensory kits? You know, what if they, how do they want to reach out to the, the uh, neurodiverse community? How do they want to handle, uh, you know, these new kind of interactions? Now, modern games have a lot of social interactions through multiplayer games or gamers live streaming on a platform like Twitch. I wonder whether that socializing brings with it real world social problems. I found that a lot of people have the misconception of people with autism. Let's just say it, they use it as a slur. They can say whatever they want because their identities are not public. So, and they don't reveal their public name. They just can hide behind a wall and be, um, be a bunch of jerks. By supporting gamers on the autism spectrum, NeuroValiant hopes to start with increasing representation. I'm Bailey Whalen, also known online as Uplift Vancouver. I am on the autism spectrum and I am also legally blind in my left eye. But I sure as heck don't let that stop me whatsoever. Bailey, as one of NeuroValiant's showcase gamers, how do you keep your live stream channel free of abuse? Create a safer space on my Twitch. I employ various tools and bots to basically block out all the bad stuff, like all the bad words and the slurs and such. Companies have started focusing on making their online world more inclusive socially, but what about other forms of access? I saw uh, there was somebody who uh, had low vision. They were like, yeah, I can't really see anything, so I, I can't really play this, unfortunately. Uh, and like that really just like was a gut punch. My name is Charles McGregor. Uh, I am the founder of Tribe Games and I've made the game called uh, Hyperdot, which is an action arcade game where you dodge everything. Uh, so you play as a dot and you just have to avoid all the different shapes that show up around the arena. That specific interaction led Charles to focus on making his game playable to as many people as he could. You can use a large variety of controllers <laughs> use a traditional gamepad, eye tracking, uh, touch, tilt, um, uh, stylus, you can uh, do uh, mouse, keyboard, there's a high contrast mode, um, there is colorblind support, uh, you can go ahead and skip uh, levels uh, if some levels are giving you trouble. And HyperDot received some big time industry recognition for including these features. HyperDot was nominated for an, a game award um, in innovation in accessibility um, and that like the day that I found that out I could not focus on anything else and I just was uh, blown away is it even possible to play a video game without video games mean a lot to me and I and I noticed uh, that uh, an entire community of people um, blind gamers are sort of shut out my name is Brian Smith. I'm an, uh, I'm an assistant professor at Columbia University uh, in the computer science department where I direct the Computer Enabled Abilities Laboratory. Brian's team developed the Racing Audio Display, or RAD, to allow gamers to play racing games without the use of visuals. It's an aud it's a audio system that works with a standard pair of headphones that makes it possible for blind players to have the same experience playing racing games as sighted players have. Imagine that you're sitting directly behind the car that you're that you're controlling so that you hear the sound of the car's engine right in front of your face. As you steer left and right, 
Uh, you're controlling that car directly, and so you hear the sound of the engine move to the left or to the right in front of you. And what that um, uh, what that uh, indicates is the relative risk of you hitting either edge of the racetrack. As you approach a turn, you first hear a number, which is the, the number of the turn. So you might hear seven, if it's turn seven, for example. Then you'll hear a series of four beeps that sound kind of like woom, woom, woom. And what that does is it establishes a rhythm before the turn so you know exactly when the turn is going to start. It starts on that fourth beep, that that beep continues sounding as long as you're in the turn, so you know when the turn ends. And then you'll hear the beeps on the left if it's a right a left turn, and on the right if it's a right uh, turn. Um, and, and also the pitch of the beeps gives you information about the sharpness of the turn. Wow, that sounds like an incredibly creative solution. Brian, I'm curious, how well did the blind gamers do using the RAD? We uh, pitted uh, some blind gamers um, up against uh, sighted players. Um, and we actually saw that uh, that uh, blind players with our uh, interface um, could actually uh, do just as well as casual sighted gamers. And so I think that speaks to the potential of uh, these types of assistive tools um, to really elevate the nature of uh, games and gaming uh, for people who are blind. To not think of games anymore as being uh, simplified versions of what sighted players would play, but to really make it possible for blind gamers to play the same games that sighted players can. I think the bar is rising, the bar is getting higher, um, and that's something I'm, I'm really, really excited about. And as far as Lucas is concerned, raising the bar is what the industry should be striving for. I know how important it is to um, really sort of becoming more inclusive and more understanding because understanding is key. And some people might not get it at first, but there's always room for growth and learning.